Hello everyone, Tiara here with Luna Fay Creations. Can you tell I've recorded this quite a few times and said the wrong thing? <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in to another soap making adventure. I am really excited about today's soap because it is the final soap in the shop update for February 2021. It has been a while. Well, it's been two months and it feels like longer. It has been since December since I have done a shop update of, of any new soaps. It's, yeah, it's been a while. Struggling here to juggle managing a business of making soap and being a mom. But I'm getting the hang of it slowly and surely. I will do it because I love both of these things. Today's soap is in the Etsy shop alongside other soaps like Champagne Dream, Cinnamon Irish Cream, both of the confetti soaps. I've done a restock of the Buttery Wizards Brew. And today's soap is a chocolate orange vanilla cream because I was just so indecisive on what I wanted this design to be like. I wanted chocolate and orange, but then I wanted vanilla and orange. So I just decided to do all of these things using a new ingredient that I've not used in soap before, which was a vanilla bean powder. I've also put cocoa powder in this and it's just a delectable looking soap and I really hope you guys enjoy it. By the way, how do you say O-R-A-N-G-E? Is it orange or is it orange? Because I know I'm going to get a lot of comments about how I pronounce orange. <laughs> I don't think there's a wrong or right way to do it, but let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you haven't done so already, join me for more soap making adventures by clicking that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoy this video or leave me a comment down below. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Let's get to soap making and we're going to make a vanilla cream chocolate orange. Chocolate orange and vanilla cream soap. Let's go. So to start off, we are going to whisk together the lye solution into the oils. I have my Tessa Silk that has been dissolved in the hot lye solution and my sodium lactate is in there as well and then it has sat overnight so that it's at room temperature. My oils as well, I have coconut milk powder in here and some kaolin clay. And the reason why I'm going to whisk this is because I wanna do sculpted layer at the bottom. So we want this to stay very fluid. Go ahead and get this nicely mixed together and I'm gonna split some of it off for that sculpted layer. So this color is Mango Tango, that is by Nurture Soap, and this is going to be my bottom layer. I'm gonna pour off enough of this to make a sculpted layer. I'm gonna hang on to the rest of this and put it to the side. I'm gonna mix this in a little bit with the whisk as well. I'm gonna give it a very short buzz, and then I'm gonna pour some more off into a little cup so that I can save that for the top and then I will mix it up again till it's a re like a really good trace because 
in order to sculpt the layer, you really want it to be um, set up so it holds its shape, but I don't want the stuff that I'm saving on the side to set up and not be able to be easily poured on top of the soap when I need it. So the fragrance I picked out was called, it is called orange cream vanilla, but it's no longer just orange cream and vanilla. I had some chocolate fragrance oil left over and I decided I wanted to mix them together. Now this fragrance has 3% vanillin in it and it will discolor to a tan. So this isn't going to stay this lovely orange color. It will darken, which I am taking into account as well as the fact that the chocolate that I added in there has some vanillin in it as well, and that is going to darken it. It's just like the vanilla orange cream is. So it is not going to stay this color, but it will still be a dark orange. It smells like a little bit like a Tootsie Roll. I don't know, maybe the orange Tootsie Rolls. Anyone know what I'm talking about there? Uh, and orange sherbet or creamsicle. Not my favorite scent. I'm not a very creamsicle kind of person or dreamsicle or however you call them, whatever you choose to call it. I am not a big fan of like orange and cream together. That is why I added the chocolate in there since one, the discoloration. I might as well, if it's going to be brown, you might as well make it chocolate and orange. And I'm not a huge fan of orange cream. So add that little bit of chocolate in there and I can stand it a little bit better. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pour this into my molds, let it set up, and then I have this little cake comb. I had Brad cut it to fit the size of my molds, but I will use, I think, this side. Yeah, I'm going to use this side. <laughs> Nothing like last minute planning to scoff that design into the soap. So for the rest of the batter, I actually scraped off the excess from the sculpted layer into this bowl. And I'm just going to combine it with the batter that is going to also be colored orange <laughs> as an accent swirl. And then into the big bucket, I'm going to add some cocoa powder as a natural colorant and because, well, it's chocolate. Ooh, I always forget that the bowl is bigger than the spatula and I will lose that spatula in the bowl and it makes a mess. It's always fun. So yeah, a little bit of real chocolate in this because it makes sense. And then into this bowl here, we're going to add some more of this, well, the rest of this mango tango in there. And I'm also going to add some vanilla bean powder. Might have to add a little bit more. Let's see. Try and get the color as close as possible. I always forget to silence my phone. I like to keep it on because, well, Bradley's watching the baby, but whoever's watching the baby, I want to make sure that I can answer my phone. <laughs> All right, let's give this a mix and add the vanilla bean powder. Then I will mix up that uh, chocolate base and add my fragrance, do a little in the pot swirl, and then pour it into my molds over top of that sculpted layer.
So it's not colored, so it should stay this bright orange on top. I think I might have saved too much of it. And then I'm going to take a chopstick and I am going to swirl it. And then I have some embeds. Maybe I'll do, just afraid that it'll be too much, but we'll add a little stripe down the middle there. These guys are crooked. All right, that's good. And then chopstick. Like so, just to make a pretty design on top. And then on one side, maybe in the middle, I think I'll do it in the middle. I have some little orange segments that I'll stick on there. So this vanilla bean powder, it is the second time I've used it in soap. First time on a soap that I have filmed and will have for sale. So it's, it's fairly new to me. I had a old co-worker years ago introduced me to, this is going to be tough without having to drop them in because they're hard to grip. Um, she introduced me to her aunt who rescues cats. I feel like I am covering up that pretty design. Oh well. <laughs> Hopefully it'll, once it sets up and the color will really pop once that brown darkens. I need to finish my story. <laughs> her aunt rescues cats and I had adopted one from her years ago. She contacted me and asked if I would do a custom order for her, which I don't usually do, but I made the exception. They were vet, um, a vet office. She uses, she wanted to like have gifts for them, I suppose. And she designed a bar. She wanted it to look like a calico cat and have oatmeal and vanilla bean powder and smell like vanilla and mango. And so I thought vanilla bean powder was very unusual. I had never come across a soap that had vanilla bean powder in it and it sounded very expensive. I remembered that Julie over at Ophelia Soapery uses it quite often. So I went on Amazon and I'll leave the link to the one that I bought. And I decided to give it a try. And here's the bar that she designed a calico cat, little paw print. It's got vanilla bean powder in there. Looks like a calico cat. I'm thinking about doing a version of the soap for you guys, changing it up a bit. Which, using vanilla bean powder is pretty cool in soaps, and I must say I'm addicted to, now there's a new ingredient I can use. We got a little cricket on that guy. All right, I think that is all that I'm going to add to this soap. I'm going to give it a spray with some rubbing alcohol. And then I'm gonna let it sit for 24 hours and I will come back and cut it. And then once I have them cut into bars, there's another embed that I'm going to be putting on the front of it. So before I cut into this, I'll let you take a look at the side of this. I have got partial gel going on in there. I've got some soda ash going on in there, but I'm not too worried about it and I'll show you why. But let's cut into it and see what the inside looks like. And ta-da! So you might recall I said that there is vanillin inside of this fragrance, which means it is going to darken the soap up quite a bit. And so I had cut a loaf of this yesterday just to get an idea, once it's sat, what it looks like. So let's cut a couple more of these and see, gosh, that's loud, <laughs> see if there's any obvious areas where you can see a partial gel. So far it's not, but you can see that ring around there. That is actually the vanillin. So once it hits the air, the whole entire soap is gonna start turning that color. And it will sit for about four to six weeks and it will continue to go dark. And I'm actually not getting 
the partial gel look of this soap so far. Maybe it was just what I had cut yesterday and then once that sat, like this has been sitting, it kind of disappears. So, smells really good with the chocolate in there. I'm still not a huge fan of like orange and vanilla, but you put that chocolate in there and it smells delectable and I'd eat it if it were edible. It's not, of course. <laughs> Let me show you ones I cut yesterday. Here's one, this one has a bit of a partial gel in it and you can see that line there, but this will continue to darken and I have a feeling that it'll all match up in the end and I'm not too worried about it. I do have one more thing to add to the front of this soap. And that's a little melt and pour chocolate bar that I wanna just kinda of put in the corner to add to the design. And I will leave that footage at the end of the cutting. Thank you guys so much for watching. These will be available on February 26th, which if you're watching this right now, it is February 26th and it is a shop update. So you can find these, the Irish cream, uh, the champagne dreams and the confetti bars that I've made all in the Etsy shop. The first official release of 2021. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and haven't done so already, join me for more fun soap making videos and adventures by hitting that subscribe button, notification bell for obviously notification of when I upload new videos. Questions or comments, leave them for me in the comment section down below. And until next time, I hope you guys have a very nice day. And I will smell you later.